as well. And let me spotlight you. Okay. All right. So, um, Shruti, over to you. I think we are uh, good to start. The rest of the people are still joining, but I think uh, it is time to kick off the session. All right. So, before we begin, I want to quickly check with the, all the participants if you are able to see my screen, if you are able to see me clearly and hear me, hear me clearly. Let me know in the chat box if you all can see the screen. You can hear me clearly and then we'll begin the session. Uh, Ritesh, you don't want me to wait and we can begin right now, right? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. So I'm just waiting for people to confirm once. Are you all able to see my screen? Give me a quick yes or no in the chat box and we will quickly dive into the session. Yes, yes. Are you able to see my screen, everyone? Are we clear? Are we good? All right, perfect. Let's begin then. So before we get into tools, tricks, in fact, before I even introduce myself, I want to quickly ask that why is presentation designing so important? Why are we sitting here on a Sunday evening learning this skill called PowerPoint? Well, we all have seen such slides, right? We have either been a victim of such slides, which means we have seen other people presenting these to us while we're sitting in conference room, or maybe we have been a culprit ourselves. I mean, I am guilty of creating such slides way back, 10 years back maybe, but I have created such slides. But does it mean that your content is not right? Does it mean that the point that you're trying to make or the idea that you're sharing is not right? Absolutely not. Sometimes the problem does not lie with the content. The problem lies with the PowerPoint. And that is the problem that we are trying to fix with this workshop today. So hi everyone, my name is Shruti Sharma. I am a PowerPoint designer and a trainer. I have trained more than 2,500 people so far. And I have an experience of more than 14 years in experiential marketing and PowerPoint designing. Uh, without wasting any further time, I'm going to get into the workshop. Now, we all have seen such beautiful slides, right? We see them on Pinterest, we see them on Google. And we are like, okay, these slides are nice, but they're not for us. And we have different reasons for not creating such slides. Sometimes we feel that, okay, our, our content is not like this. You know, our content is much more. Sometimes we, do, we don't know the right tool to create such slides. Sometimes we don't have the right inspiration to get to these designs, right? So the reasons could be many. But we are going to now go into the root cause of this. Now, let me show you a couple of examples. If you look at this particular slide, it's a very basic slide, which has a header and five pointers. Now, this could be anything. This could be your index slide. It could be a content slide. But just with a, just with a couple of changes, you can completely transform the look and feel of this slide. If you see this, I haven't done much. I have used a little bit of color and I have added a visual to it. And you can see there's a drastic difference between this and this slide, right? Let's see a couple of more examples. This one I'm sure looks much more familiar because it has more content. It has a space for infographic or a chart, but how can we show this slide differently? Look at this. It's the same slide, but it looks completely different, right? So we are going to learn all the tricks to create such slides. Let's look at another example. Now this is quite verbose. It has a lot of content. It has a JPEG, it has a pie chart. And what happens when we have to create a slide? So for example, if I give you all this slide to create, our mind automatically will start this plus shape and then start designing because we have seen four boxes and we are you know, wired to create design in a certain way. Well, it's fine to you know, bifurcate the content into four bucket, but do we have to go the same way? Can we think differently? Look at this. We still have the four different baskets, but the designing is such that it looks completely different from the previous slide. Let's look at this one. I think when you look at presentations, the way you think and the way you design slides can actually uh, show you what you're trying to say. For example, if you look at this slide, it looks like a basic slide with a header and five pointers, five bullet points, right? But the moment you look at this slide, can you figure out it's a process slide where one thing is leading to another thing, second to third, third to fourth? That's because the way it's designed, right? But you can't figure that out in this slide. So these slides are called infographic slides, basically info, information that you're giving in a graphical manner. Sometimes when you have a lot of content, you might not be able to use visuals 
but that's where icons come into the picture right so how you think about the slide how you think through the presentation is a very important thing we are going to get into that as well let's take another example now when it comes to charts and numbers somehow we feel okay in these slides we can't do much in terms of visual because what will you do with a table the table has to be a table absolutely not now if you look at this table let's try to understand what the data is representing we are talking about number of sports venues in government clubs schools colleges and private from 2015, how the number is rising to 2024. So it's like a roadmap of sports venues, right? Can we show this differently? Absolutely. Look at this. So you still have the same data. We are showing the venues of private government college, but we are showing them in, in a much more interesting manner. So you can show the data differently. You don't need to stick to the same old boring format. Let's look at this example. Again, three pointers. But if you look at this one, you can't figure out what is the format of the slide versus if you look at this. So it's a cycle where one thing is leading to second, second thing leads to third, and third connects back with the first one. And the way you design the slide can have a lot of content like this one, and you don't have space to play with visuals, etc. You can actually make a lot of change just by this. Look at this. The layout is exactly the same. I have only bifurcated the data well and I've used a vibrant color to uplift the look and feel. So you have to play smartly when it comes to presentation. Sometimes you might not get scope to play with pictures. Sometimes you won't have uh, as much space, right? So you'll have to think smartly. Now, we are going to learn a new way to think about presentations through this workshop. And the reason why I'm emphasizing so much on the visual PowerPoint, I feel, is a visual storytelling tool. It's not a tool to dump data like Excel or Word document, right? So the reason I feel that we should focus on visual, there's a recent study which says people remember 10% of what they hear, 20% of what they read, but 80% of what they see. Because our visual memories are always much, much stronger than our hearing memory or reading memories. That's why, you know, you remember comic books more than your studies because they were, they were always supported by visuals. So that really helps and storytelling, of course. All right. Now, before I get into tools, I want to start with the process to a presentation because this will help you with a clear thought process of how to begin a presentation. So let's say that you have a, you have a presentation brief that you have to work on. Before you open PowerPoint, there's a certain process that you could follow. This is something that I follow basically. It really helps me clear my thought. It helps me create my presentation with a uh, with a clear vision. So let me take you through the process. It's a three phase, 10 step process. Let's begin with the first one, which is the preparation phase. So let's, the first step is drafting the narrative. Once you know that you have to create a presentation, decide that what is your narrative? What is it that you're going to say through your presentation? What are the stories that you're going to tell through your presentation? Every presentation has a purpose, right? You have to figure out what is that narrative that you have to plan. That's step one. Moving to the second step, decide your goal and topic. It's very important to have a goal and topic in your mind because that decides the entire course of your presentation. So keep that very clear in your head. Moving on to the third step, start gathering the information. Once you know the narrative once you have the goal in mind, you will start gathering all the information that you can get. And in this age of internet and social media, we have access to insane amount of data, right? We can get information from uh, newspaper articles, from video, from social media channels, and so much more. So that's where your phase one ends, which is your preparation phase. And we are going to get into the second phase, content phase. Now, once you have all that data, what happens the moment you have all the data, it sometimes get, you know, gets confusing for you also and you end up putting all that data onto your slide. That's where this important step is required. You need to group the information and eliminate anything that you find irrelevant. Because I don't know if you're aware, but like with chefs, they, your chefs are always asked to keep their counter clean because a clean counter represents a clean dish because it gives you clarity of thought the same way. If you have too much information in your presentation, it is going to, you know, get into a soup. So always try to eliminate any data that you think you wouldn't require and keep only the important information. In only in that case, you'll be able to create a presentation which is neat and clean. Otherwise, you'll end up dumping everything onto your presentation. 
all right that's your step four step five is basically know your audience now why is knowing uh, your audience important now uh, let's say i'm creating a presentation on after effects of covid on travel and aviation industry now if i'm presenting it to an audience who's already from the travel background they'd already know a lot about uh, you know how the industry is doing right versus so so my context setting will be much lesser i'm going to focus directly on the ideas versus if i'm presenting it to an audience which is uh, you know entirely new like if i'm presenting it to an audience who do not have any background of uh, travel i'll have to do a lot more context setting so my flow of presentation will entirely be different my thought process will be different so once you know your audience you can decide how you want your presentation to flow that's where the next step comes into the picture this is actually seventh step so sixth step is add a, add a catchy title this is a very casual one it's important to have a catchy title because it has high recall value so i'm not going to deep dive into it then we get into the design phase so so far i haven't really opened my powerpoint i'm only doing my preparation so far and figuring out my content now is when we get into the design phase and this is the step which is absolutely of utmost importance which is storyboarding the slide also called as sketching or wire framing so once you know that you have to create a presentation you have your brief you have all of that sorted you have to structureize your presentation which means that you before you start designing and that is where i think people uh, get confused a lot what they do is they they put one slide saying title they start designing that slide then they come to the second slide start designing always create your structure of the presentation first and then start designing it will be very very helpful for you because it will give you a lot of clarity of thought so when i say storyboarding i mean if you are creating a 10 slider for example create the structure of and content of each and every slide slide 1 title so and so slide 2 index slide put all the five pointers step 3 uh, slide 3 context setting whatever content needs to come so structureize your entire presentation that will help you a lot trust me a lot of people like to do that on a piece of paper or like a notepad you absolutely fine whether you want to do it on powerpoint whether you want to do it on notepad whatever works for you it's absolutely all right moving on to the eighth step which is know your design language now uh, there two sort of, there two kind of presentation one is an internal presentation that you're designing for your own organization so for example if i'm working for airtel i design all the presentation for that organization in that case i already know the design language of airtel like because i make presentation every day so i know that they use red and white color i know what kind of font they use i know what kind of shapes they use so it's fine but when you're making a presentation for an external audience like for a client for an investor for a partner whoever it is in that case so for example if i have to i have to present a presentation to uh, let's say jk tires all right so i will have to figure out what is the design language so you can go to their website you can check out their social media pages their print ads outdoor ads so to crack any brand's design language you need to figure out three things what kind of colors they use what kind of fonts they use and what kind of shapes they use that's what consists of design language and the reason that we should use their design language so they are used to seeing certain colors and certain creatives every day right day in day out so the moment you present similar sort of graphic it will have an instant connect and they'll feel that you have done some sort of homework so always know the design language of the brand that you're presenting to it's very 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 important coming to the ninth step which is icons and imagery now once you're done with your structure your uh, you know your your design language etc figure out what kind of icons and imagery you would need save them in a folder and move to the next step which is now you can officially start beginning your work on powerpoint so far you were preparing you were compiling you were scrutinizing uh, you were structurizing and now this is the step where you can actually open your powerpoint and start designing all right so that's a 10 step process that i like to follow for my presentation and i think uh, they help me think in a much clearer manner now i'll begin right away with the tools and the first tool that i want to start with is alignment and distancing so a lot of people ask me that what are the things that we can do to make a presentation look better so i have two ideas for them one is definitely add visuals to your presentation that always helps 
secondly you know a lot of time you when you're making presentation you have so much of content that you don't have space for visuals in those cases of if you're making a presentation with a lot of content text numbers always make sure that everything is properly aligned alignment and distances is the key to a clean presentation so even if your presentation is visually not very attractive if you make a clean presentation it will always be presentable and it will always look neat and clean so that is very important now when we do it manually it it will all you'll always have gaps so i'm going to teach you this tool that will help you align multiple things in single command let me show you so let's say if you have to create a slide like this so if you see these boxes they are very neatly top aligned right like to the to the t the distance between each box is same the icon is right in the center when you do it manually it is almost impossible to do it uh, you know accurately so now how you can do it using this simple command let's say you have to align these boxes in one line there are two ways of aligning either you align horizontally or you align vertically right in this case i have to align them horizontally so what i'm going to do is step one decide the top the most left and the most right position so i want for example the boxes to start from here and i want them to end here so i've decided the left to right position now second step select all the boxes once you have selected all go to shape format this is where what you need to focus on go to align click on align middle so my one job is done now all of them are in one line now what i need to do is i need to make sure that the the distance between each box is same so i'm going to go to align again so if you see the option i have align left align center align right top middle bottom distribute horizontally and distribute vertically i need these to be distributed horizontally so i'm going to click on this and look at this in one simple command all my boxes are properly aligned now let's see if we can do the same thing with box and icons both i'm going to decide my top uh, most left and most right position select them all go to shape format align align middle so one job is done they are all in one line now i'm going to do align distribute horizontally but did you see it didn't happen the way i wanted that's because right now your icons are also one unit right so first you have to align icon inside each box and group them so let's do that i'm going to select these two things i have to align them in in a way right so shape format align center one job is done align middle and it's perfect i'm going to group them so to group them you can right click and group like this or you can use the shortcut called control g so i'm using the shortcut control g to group these two things we're going to do the same exercise on all the boxes second one selected align center align middle control g to group them third one align center align middle control g to group them the next one align center align middle control g moving to the next one align center align middle control g second last select both align center align middle control g the last one align center align middle and control g now i have these elements selected now you can do the alignment feature that we just did so select all of them shape format align distribute horizontally align middle and look at this you have got the result that you wanted so that's how you can use the alignment tool to practically align anything i'll give you one more example so let's say you have to create a slide like this but when you are writing down you always write in a very haphazard manner right you it's very difficult difficult to write in one line so this is how it looks like now if you have to align it in uh, like from top to bottom so decide your most top the top most and the bottom most location like this in the bottom most location now select them all shape format align left so i'm going to first make sure the left align then align and distribute vertically and look at this how beautifully they are aligned looks great right 
So that's how you can align any slide using these tools. It's one of the most useful tools that you'll be using once you get a little hang of it. This is something you'll be using practically in every presentation. Now coming to the next thing that we're going to learn, which is time-saving hacks. Now, when it comes to PPTs, we are always running short on time, right? So I'm going to show you some hacks that are going to help you save time every day when you're making presentation. So let's begin with the first one. I know a lot of you would already know Format Painter, so that's not the hack. I'll come to the hack. So Format Painter, for those people who don't know, I'm going to quickly explain. It's basically a feature that helps you copy properties of one object onto another one, be it fonts, be it shapes, be it pictures. For example, if you look at this text, I have worked on this text, right? The font is different. Uh, it's thicker. It has an outline. It has a shadow. So let's say I want all the below fonts like this. So what you can do is go to this. On home page, you have this brush icon which says for matte printer. Click on it and click on the second font where you want to copy the property. Then look at this, right? But if you have to do it on all these lines, it can become quite tiring to again go to Format Painter, time consuming, right? So I'm going to show you a hack which can help you use this particular tool called Format Painter multiple times. So just click on this. Instead of clicking once, click on the Format Painter twice. And now it basically locks the mode. Now you can use it as many times as you want. Look at this. And you can actually use it across slides. If I have to go to other slides and use it, I can do that as well. So that's the beauty of this tool. It's one of the most amazing tools and it's really time saving. Now, let's say if we talk about these shapes. Now, this shape I have worked on, it has a certain color. It has a sketchy gradient thick outline and there's also glow around it. Now, if I want to copy properties of this onto other ones, I can just click on it. Double click on Format Painter and look at this again you can do it across slides that's a beautiful tool that can that can help you uh, be more efficient when it comes to presentation all right now coming to the second hack which is control d it's also called the smart copy now we all have heard about control c control v but control d is something that most of us are not aware of control d as a tool can help you copy one object multiple times with the same formatting. For example, if let's say I want to have, uh, you know, six, seven times the same content at the bottom as well, I'm going to press Control D beside the distance between two, like this much. Now, all you need to do is press Control D and look at this. Do you see that everything is properly aligned? I don't have to use the align tool also. The distance between each line is same. They are properly left aligned. So that's the beauty of Control D. It basically does alignment also for you. Let me show it to you once again to understand how it happens. So let's say I have to do the same thing with this circle that you see over here. I'm going to select it. Control D. Decide the location like the distance. And now you can press Control D again and again and look at this. It's a beautiful tool can help you immensely. So I would always uh, recommend using this. All right. Let me show you once again. If you want to achieve a slide like this and this is your content, you can select it all. Control D. Select the position and the distance and just Control D. And you can do it as many times as you want. Look at this. So that's the beauty of Control D. All right. Moving on to the third hack, which is lock drawing mode. So a lot of times you have to create these flow charts or uh, these team structures, uh, these hierarchy chart, organization structure, etc. So these shapes are fine, but when you have to connect, you know, put these connectors, it can be quite time consuming because you have to go insert, click on shapes, choose the connector and do this. Now again, I have to go to insert again, go to shape. So that's quite a time consuming process. Now in this case also, you can lock the mode just like you did in Format Painter. So go to shapes, Go to the connector that you want to choose instead of clicking on it right click and do lock drawing mode so basically it locks the mode and till the time you don't press escape you can draw this uh, this connector as many times as you want look at this so again saves a lot of time and effort look at this not till the time i don't go to the next slide or i don't press escape i can just keep drawing the same connectors look at this 
So that's the beauty of log drawing board. So I'll just explain one, click on it, uh, go to insert, shapes, go to the connector, right click and log drawing board. So that's how you do it. Now coming to the next one, which is ungroup icon. Now this one is an extremely useful tool. I mean, I use it in almost all my presentations. Let me show you how it happens. So let me get two icons over here. So we have inbuilt icons in PowerPoint, right? So I'm going to click on this. Choose the icon that you want to go ahead with. We'll wait for the icons to load. So now PowerPoint, especially the newer version of Office 365 has so many inbuilt icons. It's just amazing. So I'm going to click on process. So let's say I want to take this example and I want to take this icon and insert. Now, when we use icons, we feel a little uh, restricted because you can't do everything with icons. For example, let's say I want to use this particular icon uh, for three step process, step one, step two, step three. And I want separate color for each step. So I cannot do that because when you go here, the complete icon becomes of a certain color, right? Whichever color you choose. But if you want to maybe add different animations to each step or maybe add different colors, how can you do that? So all you need to do to break down this icon is right click and click on convert to shape. The moment you do that, you will see that each shape has become a separate unit. So now, for example, step one, you want it to be of blue color. Step two has to be, let's say, green color. And step three has to be purple color. So you can do that. Now, same thing for this. If, let's say, you want to increase your team structure icon, you can right click, convert to shape. Now you can practically add as many people as you want. You can have different colors for different levels, you can have uh, different animations given. So all of that is possible now with this particular tool. That's very, very useful and very, very uh, time, time efficient, basically. It helps you save a lot of time. All right. So very simple, just right click and convert to shape. Coming to the next tool, which is insert audio without downloading it. So how do you do that? So if, if you want to insert an audio in, onto your presentation without downloading it, you can do that. Let me show you how. So go to your blank slide, click on insert, go to video. Instead of clicking here, click on online videos. So insert video and online videos. Now this window will pop up. It will ask you for the address, the URL that you want to insert into it, the video in URL. So I'm going to go to my... Uh, so this is my YouTube page. So for example, I want to pick this video particularly. I'm going to go to that video, select the URL and insert it here. Wait for the video to load. It will take a couple of seconds only and click on insert. This takes less than 30 seconds for the video to be inserted onto your slide. And it is going to be a high resolution video. You might think that it's blurred because the, the thumbnail looks like that. But the moment you see it on full screen and you play, it will play in a crystal clear HD format in which the video is, you know, uh, there on power on, on the YouTube. Look at it. So it's that good. That good. All right. And this is my YouTube channel in case any one of you uh, would like to revise some of the tools that you're learning. So it's Power of PowerPoint with Shruti Sharma. Now moving on to the next tool that we're going to learn. It's called Scribble Pen and Eyedropper. Now this one is a very, very quick hack uh, and a tool basically. It, let me show you from the beginning. Okay. So now sometimes, uh, let's say you want to create an e-invite. I want to create this e-invite for my kids' superhero theme birthday party. And I feel this one looks perfect but it already has text over here, right? So how do I use this for my uh, invite? This tool will help you with single color plain backgrounds. So always remember it's only for single color plain backgrounds if you are using 
any picture or any uh, jpeg which has texture or gradient it won't work so now to use this one let me show you the hack so click on insert go to shapes you will see this thing called scribble in lines the last option is scribble the moment you click on it your cursor turns into a pen so i'm going to just randomly draw to hide this area where i want to put my own content and i'm using this tool called eyedropper to pick the background color don't worry about this tool i'm going to teach it to you eyedropper we'll get into it in detail look at this and you have blank canvas to play with now let's do it once again so let's say this is an infographic that you downloaded online and you feel wow this one works perfectly for my slide i need a four step infographic but how do we use it because it already has content so in that case this tool comes handy go to shapes scribble select the data that you want to hide go to shape fill in this case i don't need eyedropper since it's white color but look at this same thing i'm going to do on the next one So same way you can do for the bottom too and you can get an empty canvas to play with. That's the beauty of this tool. All right. Now coming to the next tool, which we just saw a glimpse of, which is eyedropper. It's a beautiful tool. It can be used in so many versatile ways. Let me show you what this tool is. So basically it's a tool that lets you pick color from any JPEG. So for example, you have to create a presentation for Twitter and you want to use Twitter blue. Generally what we do is we go to shape fill. And we use blue, which is closer to Twitter blue. But when you actually see it on full screen, you will see that the blues are different, right? So you can't do that. So in order to get the same blue, all you need to do is click on shape fill, go to this option called eyedropper. It basically converts your cursor into a dropper. And look at this. When I'm hovering over these different colors, it's picking the color. So if I want Twitter blue, I can just click like this and it will give me a Twitter blue. Let's say I want YouTube red. Shape fill, eyedropper, YouTube red. Let's say I want WhatsApp green. Shape fill, eyedropper, and WhatsApp green. I want this Amazon orange. Shape fill, eyedropper, and Amazon orange. Now let's say you want LinkedIn blue. Shape fill, eyedropper, and LinkedIn blue. So that's how you can pick any color. Now, this is a very versatile uh, tool. It can be used in multiple ways. For example, for any single color plane background, always remember this is only for single color plane background like this. Sometime when you download the imagery, it is not 16 is to 9 ratio, like exactly for the screen. It's smaller. And in such cases, you can use this tool. So click on format background, where you see the color for the background, right? Click on that and click on eyedropper and pick the background color and look at this you have got a full screen picture i'll show it once again so this is your slide right click format background go to colors eyedropper and look at this so as i said eyedropper can be used in thousands of ways i've shown you just a couple let me show you one last sometime when you are putting text on imagery you're not sure what sort of color should you use because sometimes it's it doesn't shine on the slide on the imagery so picking up a color from the imagery always helps. it creates a nice complementary look and feel so for example when i go to font instead of choosing color from here i'm going to go to eyedropper and i'll choose color from the slide like let's say i want to choose this color look at this now for this also i want to choose this icing gray sort of color so you'll see instantly the color is shining on the image suddenly, right? So choosing the right color on the imagery is important. If you look at this, can you see this color is almost dying on the slide? It's like almost getting lost. And now I'm going to go to eyedropper and pick the color from the image itself. So color one, let's take eyedropper, sorry, one second, eyedropper, color two, and let's take one more color color three 
and you will see suddenly the colors are looking nice and the readability also increases if you use the right contrast color. So that's where this tool comes into the picture. Now moving on to the next tool that we are going to learn, which is shape techniques. So just like how we learned about color, we are going to touch upon this technique for shapes. This is such a useful technique. It's going to help you create multiple layouts. All right. So let's go to the first technique, which is edit points. So edit point is a tool that lets you custom create shapes. So for example, if this is my shape, I want to customize it. You can just right click and click on edit points and look at this. Suddenly your edges have become editable. Now you can create shapes out of it. Like if I want to create this shape, let's say. If I want to do this, I can do this as well. But what if I want to create this sort of shape? Let me get a basic square. So if you want to create something like this, so right click edit points. But these four points won't help me create these shapes. Edit points actually lets you add a more edit point as well. So for example, if I want to go in the center and right click, I can do add a point and look at this. If I want to do the same thing here, right click and add a point. So it can actually help you create anything. So for example, if I look at this, this is basically hero logo. So I had created a presentation for them where they wanted this shape to be used. Now, this shape is not there in PowerPoint, but I can trace this shape using edit points. So I'm going to create a basic rectangular shape on top of it, making the shape till zero so that I can see the color in the background. The right click, edit points. Look at this. I've traced the shape. If you want to trace the same color, you can do eyedropper and You've got the exact same thing. So that's how beautiful these tools are. Let's take one more example. So sometimes when we look at slides, we are not even able to figure out that edit point is being used in this. For example, if I look at this, I think it looks nice, but I didn't know that I, edit point is being used in this slide. But let me show you where. So this is number one, this is number two, and this is number three, right? So send to back. Do you see in this, it's very clear these numbers, but in this suddenly the gray part is coming, which you don't want. So you can actually get rid of it using edit point. So right click, edit point. I'm going to go here and add a point and look at this. That's the magic. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Right click, edit points, add a point, add a point. At this. So edit point is an amazing tool. We'll take one last example of edit points. So let me zoom out a little. When you look at this slide and this slide, can you see the readability of this is much better than this? Let me show you how we can use edit point uh, differently. Now this is a JPEG that I downloaded for a presentation, which was a technology oriented presentation. So I felt that, okay, the readability is getting lost here, but there's an uh, automatic shape that is getting created because of the background. So why don't I trace that shape? So let me show you how to do that. Insert shape. So I'm, I'm just choosing any basic five-sided shape, making shape is zero so that I can see the uh, you know color in the background. Edit points. Now I just have to match points. That's it. Point one, point two, Point three, point four, point five, and add a point. I've added a point, point six. Made it black. And now I'm going to click on format shape and make it a little transparent. This bar represents transparency. That's all. If you want to get rid of the outline, you can get rid of the outline. I'm going to bring the text to front and look at this. The beauty of this is suddenly this, this image doesn't look like something that uh, you have created. Like it looks like a part of the picture itself, right? But 
technically you have not uh, you you played with the image right that's now how it was so that's the beauty of this tool now coming to the next tool which is summary zoom now this is a beautiful tool it's a very interactive and dynamic tool that can make your presentation look really different now let me show you what this is you know whenever you're presenting a deck uh you want it's very important to have a recap slide because that encapsulates the 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 gist of your presentation right you want to reiterate on certain ideas certain designs whatever you have presented that's where summary zoom comes into the picture now if i want to create an interactive recap slide how do i do that go to insert go to zoom you will see this thing called summary zoom click on that now this shows me my entire presentation now let's say that there are six slides that i want to put in recap slide one slide two slide three slide four and slide uh, let's take one more slide five this one all right and one more slide. let's take six slides. slide six and click on insert it creates a new slide for you i'm going to get rid of this background first one second okay so the new slide that it has created you can call it recap slide but now is the magic part If I'm showing this as the final recap slide or some of these slides, I can go to this slide from here, talk about this highlight and come back to my actual slide. Go to the next one, speak about it, reiterate, come by, come to my actual slide. Go to the third one. So just like that, you can go to any slide by just click of a button. To come back, you need to press the left side arrow key. Look at this. What a beautiful tool. Make your presentation look so interactive suddenly, right? That's the beauty of summary zoom. So the thing with summary zoom is when you play summary zoom, it basically creates a new slide for you, which will always uh, come as a separate slide, like on top. You can copy this and use this as well. That's not a problem at all, but it's a beautiful tool. All right. Now, um, one second, let me quickly reshare. Yeah. Now, another thing that you can do with summary zoom, let me show it once again. Insert, go to zoom, summary zoom, choose the slide. For example, I've chosen six slides. I'm going to reduce two and go to take four slides this time and click on insert. Now, these are my four slides. You can also copy it and put it on any slide. So, for example, I want to put it on this slide. So, I can do that. Now, this suddenly becomes like, interesting slide for me. I'm going to delete this. Nobody would guess this slide would be such an interactive slide, right? Look at this. So I can go, come back to my original slide. So you can put it on anything, just like think creatively, think where, where else can you place it? You can use it on uh, data, numbers, anything that you want to highlight in the end. Now, before I get into this thing, before I get into the next part, I want to quickly check with all of you that how many of you are willing to learn more about PowerPoint? Did you find these tools interesting? Do you think that you would like to learn more? Uh, do you think these are going to help you in your everyday PowerPoint journey? Let me know. Let me know in the chat box and then we're going to move forward. Did you like the tools? Did you enjoy uh, watching them? Do you think that you would like to know more about, if you want to learn more about PowerPoint? All right. So if you are somebody who want to learn more about PowerPoint, I have something for you. So we have an advanced PowerPoint masterclass, which has, so right now what I showed you was maybe two to 5%, not even five, actually 2% of what PowerPoint can do. This tool, like this has actually become a storytelling tool. It's a designing tool. It's no more just a tool to dumb data. And what you can do with this is just amazing. And we are going to learn that. If you want to learn more about it, I have a plan for you. So we have a eight module course for you, which has everything that PowerPoint has to offer. Even if you are somebody who's new to PowerPoint, who do not even know basics of it, 
it will cover everything from basics to intermediate to advanced. So everything that PowerPoint has to offer, beginning with the Kickstarter course, which covers the basics about design ideas, how to use slide master, PPT shortcuts, uh, charts and tables, uh, everything. Now coming to the next one, understanding color psychology. Today, what you learned in color was just one tool, which is the eyedropper. You can do so much more with colors. You can learn how to create gradient. You saw gradient in my presentation. How to play with transparency, how you can use gradient and transparency together. Everything, how to use color wheel, how to combine two or more colors. This, this particular module will cover that. Coming to the third one, which is shapes. Now, in today, we learned only one tool about shape, which was edit points. But shapes is such a vast topic. You will learn how to create uh, new shapes. You will learn how to insert pictures into shape, how to use intersect, how to use shape in infographic, how to use shape effects, how to use shadows, outline, 3D shapes. Coming to the fourth module, which is play with fonts. Today, we didn't even touch fonts. Font itself is a topic which has how to download new fonts, how to handle text like a designer, how to combine two or more fonts, how to use gradient in font, how to insert pictures into font, and so much more. The fifth is going to be tools and hacks for design mastery. For example, today we learned about alignment and distances and time-saving hacks. So there are many more time-saving hacks. There are uh, multiple tools that are going to help you design mastery that we're going to cover in this module. The sixth is using imagery for storytelling. So what kind of imagery should we use? What are the websites that we can use to get free imagery? How to uh, remove background? How to extend background? How to use picture transparency? Everything will be covered in this. Seventh is going to be layout and template scheme that will help you create a complete template scheme. The last is animation and transition. How to use animation and various transitions. So we are going to cover all this. So there are eight learnings in one simple masterclass. And that is not all. We are going to give you. So let me just tell you a little bit about this particular uh, masterclass. So you're going to get recorded lessons for your convenience, which means that you don't have to, like right now today, you are sitting here this is my convenience, but these are going to be all recorded lessons, which you can watch anytime and anywhere that you want. So it's not a uh, time restricted. If you think that you want to uh, watch it after dinner, one lesson, quick lesson, you can do that. If you want to, uh, you know, cover one lesson while taking a cab to your office, you can do that. So these are going to be entirely onto your convenience. The second one, you will get lifetime access to all these lessons. So, you know, sometimes when you are learning right now, like you're taking this class, when you try to do that, sometimes you forget it, right? If you don't practice it immediately, but this will give you a lifetime access to all the lessons, which means you will, you will know, uh, you know, whenever you need to access these lessons, you can always just log in and do that. So that's the beauty of it. Also, these are very, these are not really one, one hour or two, two hour of videos. These are quick 10 to 15 minute of video or maximum 20 minutes so that you can watch them whenever you want. You're taking Metro from home to your office. You want to, you know, quickly watch a tool. You can do that. If you are, let's say, having your evening tea and you want to quickly figure out one tool, you can do that. So it's as simple as that. It has more than 95 easy to learn lessons. Every Then they are between 5 to 15 minutes so that they're easier to grab and easier to register. Coming to the, also we have three insanely special bonuses. I'll come to that. Uh, you also need to spend only 30 minutes daily to learn and you will be able to cover the entire course in two weeks. That's about it. Now coming to the bonuses. So we have editable 1400 plus PPT templates that you're going to get if you sign up today for this workshop. We have more than 10,000 icon sets that you're going to be getting and you can use them in your presentation. And we also have best MS Excel shortcut ebook that you can use, which with all the formulas already installed into it. All right. So we have bonuses worth more than 7,000. And I know that one of the questions that you might be having right now is that how much is the course for? So the course is fee is 25,000 rupees for everybody else except you guys, because you are attending this workshop. So we have exclusive bonus for all of you. It's a limited offer for all the workshop attendees only. So we are going to offer this course to you in rupees 59999, which is around 6,000 rupees, uh, which includes your PowerPoint wizard mastery course, which, which includes 100 plus Excel templates, which includes 10,000 plus icons and 1,400 plus PowerPoint templates. So if you are interested in buying, uh, if you're interested in taking up this course, you will get a link after this workshop. You can just click on the link and sign up for this workshop. 
I'm going to be taking a few uh, Q&A mentoring sessions as well for all people who are joining the workshop. The details of that will be shared later on. If you have any question, we have a couple of minutes, so I'm open for uh, questions. Do let me know in the chat box if you want to ask something. Uh, one second, let's open the chat box. Yes. So let me know in case you have any question. This course will cover everything that PowerPoint has to offer. And if you have any doubts, any clarities that you need, I'm here to answer. But trust me, you are going to learn so much more in PowerPoint. Today we covered, like as I said, not even 2% of what PowerPoint has to offer. As a tool, it is so versatile. It is a proper designing tool, just like Photoshop now. Because PowerPoint keeps on adding feature to it with every uh, upgrade. So you can use it for all sorts of presentations. So let me know in case of any questions, if you may have, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thanks, Ritesh. Yes, it is quite a vast topic. And there's so much more to learn uh, for everyone. Let me know in case you have any questions uh, regarding the course. I'll be happy to answer. For all people who want to buy the course, you are going to get a link uh, on the in the community. Uh, it, right, Ritesh? Let me know if that's the right. Yes, yes, yes. You all will be getting a link where you can sign up for the course. Right. And the entire course is list listed there with all the recorded lessons that you can watch anywhere and anytime. Uh, these are quick, easy to understand lessons which can help you in your everyday presentations. Also, you're going to get the free bonuses that I spoke about if you take the course today. So you're going, you're going to get 1400 plus uh, PowerPoint templates, 10,000 plus icons and also free MS Excel book. So all that will be a part of the package that we are offering. Thanks, Shudhi. I think that combination with the with the bonuses are uh, making us more powerful while learning this uh, powerful session. Obviously, we are going to enrich our uh, presentation more powerful using those uh, icons, the bonuses that you right. are Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. I think we are good with all the questions. Anything that you guys would like to ask, do let me know. I'm happy to answer. So uh, in this course, uh, could you please repeat uh, what are the bonuses that we are going to get? Sorry, what are the? Bonuses we are going to get. So we are going to get around, uh, so besides the full PowerPoint masterclass, we are going to get 100 plus Excel templates. We are going to get 10,000 plus icon sets. And we are also going to get 1400 plus PowerPoint templates that you can use anywhere. In fact, if, let me just show you what kind of templates I'm talking about that you, are, that you all are going to be getting because it will help you create your presentation uh, on everyday basis much easier. So I'm going to come to that. Give me one second. In the meantime, if any of you have questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Do let me know. So guys, if uh, anyone has any other question, they can put their question in Q&A or chat box. So, for example, the Excel shortcuts, you will get all the Excel shortcuts for Mac as well as PowerPoint. That's the MS Excel ebook. The same way you're going to get a lot of ready-made template where you just need to replace the picture, put your own content, look at this. So this is like the Excel shortcut book that you're going to get. Amazing. Along with that, you're also going to get the uh, PowerPoint templates that you can use for all your presentations. And you're also going to get the icon sets that I spoke about. So that is uh, wow. my side. Uh, Ritesh, you can take over uh, if, because I don't think there are any questions right now. Yes. 